general consul. Um, we are going to talk about Dutch culture, culture today. And shall we start? Be my guest. Welcome. Okay. How can you describe what democracy means? Uh, so, but, do you do you have so many difficult questions like this? No, no. Yeah. No, this is the most difficult one. Yeah. I, uh, I think I well, the, but democracy is, is is a system of governance where the people feel well represented, and where their interests are taken care of. So I, I think that is democracy. Democracy is not. I mean, of course, it's a formal system. Mm -hmm. with elections and so on but a democracy is not something that happens once per four year democracy is a situation that during the whole year yeah people have the opportunity feel that they have the opportunity to but, be heard yeah but uh, what kind of law do you have in Netherlands to protect minorities well we have uh, well, first of all we have our constitution yeah and the constitution uh, I think Article uh, 1 says that everyone uh, has equal rights mm -hmm. for, you know, in the Netherlands, everyone has equal rights. Mm -hmm. That's one. And then we have Article 2, mm -hmm. and that says that no one can be discriminated mm -hmm. against because of language, religion, color, mm -hmm. race, etc. So that is how we protect uh, right. Uh, how do you feel? Um, for being in Turkey, is it different uh, living in Turkey than Netherlands? Of course, every country is different. Is but different. how do you feel about it? What kind of? Uh, you first ask me if it is different. Yeah. I say yes. It's, every country is extremely different. That is the nice thing of being diplomat. Each time you live in a different, uh, uh, in, in a different. Okay. Country. Well, let me ask you another question, and. Uh, do you like Turkish kebabs? Uh, well, I am not so much of a meat eater, so I am not so fond of kafta and kebab. I only like shish kebab. Yeah. Of kebab shish. Yeah. Uh, tavuk, tavuk shish, tavuk shish. Oh, I like. Okay. But I like, in general, I like Turkish food. I like uh, the, the salads, the fish. Mm -hmm. But when it comes from, you know, the southeast, Adana, so on, it's too spicy for me. I don't like spicy food. I don't like meat. But in Turkey, it's a very rich yeah. kitchen, so I, I'm happy here. So, what kind of problems um, do Turkish people have in Netherlands? What do you think about it? Well, uh, well first of all, uh, we have uh, many people from, uh, from many different backgrounds. And we have 400,000 people who have the Dutch nationality. So they mm -hmm. are Dutch just like me, but they have Turkish roots. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, they have the same problems as all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, and of course, if you are different, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, you can have language problems, especially yeah. first generation Turkish people. Mm -hmm. They have become Dutch. But just as I know, it is difficult to learn Turkish. For mm -hmm. them, it's difficult to learn Dutch. Uh, so, especially, I think, the, the first generation uh, mm -hmm. uh, immigrants, they uh, have to get used yeah. to the culture. But that applies to everyone. If I emigrate to Australia, like many mm -hmm. Dutch people did, I have to get used to Australia. Uh, what I always hear from Turkish students, Turkish business people, when they move to the Netherlands, they think that in general the Netherlands is a very warm mm -hmm. and welcoming country. So, let me ask another question. Um, what is important to the royal family in the Netherlands? Well, the, uh, depends on whom you ask. Uh, for some, it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been uh, always been fortunate that we had a very good royal family, and they are a unifying force mm -hmm. in our country. They don't have uh, formal powers. Mm -hmm. The formal powers uh, are, are not with the head of state, they're with the prime minister, the cabinet, and the, and the parliament. 
uh, but they're kind of like a symbol. So you know, every every country needs a symbol, a mm -hmm. unification symbol, and that's what they have been doing uh, mm -hmm. always. Uh, they're the head of state. So when they go abroad, they represent the Netherlands. I am officially the uh, general, the ambassador of the king. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in, in the Netherlands, the, both the previous queen and the present king, they have always, they have been and are, are at the moment very, very uh, popular. As, so, and especially in times of need, when mm -hmm. there are problems, it's good that you have someone you can look up and who. Yeah. You know, when you Cut talk, up. when you talk about um, kings and queen, um, I remember this. Um, do you think that is there any difference um, between uh, Queen's Day and King's Day? Mm. You know the celebration. Yeah, that depends on uh, depends on, on on the way how the head of state like to implement it. Uh, we had. Uh, our previous, not our last queen, but the queen before, she had this uh, parades in front of her house. So then, all all over from the Netherlands, people came to her house to uh, greet her. Mm -hmm. And then the queen, her daughter, she celebrated in a different way. Mm -hmm. So she went, you know. What to kind of difference? She went to the country. So she mm. she did not receive all those people at her home, at her palace. But she went every every year. She went to a different province. Or so, mm. well, yeah, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and I think uh, the present mm -hmm. king is more or less doing the same. But we here at the consulate, mm -hmm. we celebrate whether it's Queen's Day or King's Day. Mm -hmm. We always celebrate it in the same way. Yeah. So, is there um, a debate in Netherlands uh, about Sinterklaas? Some people claim that yeah. it's a kind of discrimination. What do you think about? Yeah, well, it is a, it's one of our traditions. And I think the, the issue is not about Sinterklaas, mm -hmm. but the issue is about uh, the people that go with him, the so-called Black Peters. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there has, been this, there has been a lot of discussion, too much discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I think, I hope it will be soon finished mm -hmm. and that we can continue celebrating Sinterklaas yeah. but then with his, his entourage, the mm -hmm. people that help him, it's colored in such a way that they don't cause any, any wrong feeling. So we had, we ourselves had uh, uh, here at the consulate, we had some uh, servants, some helpers that were colored blue others that were colored white with just some you know some black stripes others were colored all kind of different colors yeah i see so for, for the, the important thing is that Santa class is about doing good about charity anonymous that is the mo that's how it started in patara you know in turkey mm -hmm. that's how we started in, in, in the fourth century because that is the basis of the Sinterklaas story. It was this rich guy who saw poor people and he helped them. So that is how it started. Let's Turkey. talk about, let's talk about um, Dutch education system. Why Dutch education system um, is that complicated? And um, I know that Dutch who says, people... Who says it's yeah. complicated? Do you know the HBO, the hell, and the different level of schools? Um, according to students' uh, grades, and can it be discriminate? Uh, can it be discrimination uh, just uh, based on the students' grades? And I know that um, Dutch people are so good at languages, but they also want to learn Spanish a lot. Why is that? Uh, well, first, your, your your first question is on. Uh on, on, on a complicating education system. I'm not. I'm not a specialist. Uh, I didn't know it was. I don't. I didn't know it was uh, uh, complicated. I, I think uh, mm -hmm. our education system 
is one of the best in the world. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. I know that our universities, we have 13 mm -hmm. academic universities. Mm -hmm. They're all in the top 200. Yeah. Well, I know many countries where not one university is at the top 200. So all our universities are in the top 200. So that means that somehow our system is okay. And a selection process on the basis of, of marks, mm -hmm. uh, yes, that is discriminatory. It means that the best student goes to the best schools. Mm -hmm. But that's only a small part of our system. I think it's, it only applies to, to certain studies, certain selective uh, uh, schools. Uh, I think here in Turkey, you, you also have this uh, examination at the end, yeah. and then, well, uh, I think you do it as well. I think most countries do something like that. So, yes, it is discriminatory, but uh, I, I still think that our Dutch system, I'm sure it can be improved, all systems can be improved, uh, but the result is that we are one of the most competitive countries in the world. We have a lot of high tech and we have all our universities are in the top 200. So, so, um, so I think, you know, it's most important is the mentality of the people. Mm -hmm. And the leaders should set the right example. So that is most important. So you, uh, if, if that is not okay, then laws don't help, not so much. But I repeat what I said about the constitution. Mm -hmm. In our constitution is written, no one shall be discriminated. So that yeah. also applies to women. Yeah. Of course, in practice, uh, it's a long fight. We all know that uh, men could vote before women, and women earn less than men often still, yeah. and so on. So what we do is take... But is there any special law in the Netherlands mm, to prevent this? No, no I have not a law as far as I know. We, again, the constitution is enough, but we have practical uh, the, the implementation of, 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 of certain uh, practices like we want that at least 30% of all the ambassadors are women. So that is nothing to do with the law, but that is a practical step. We want to have more female CEOs, mm -hmm. so we work on that. We need more members of parliament in, uh, that are women, mm -hmm. so we take practical steps. We want more women to work, mm -hmm. so we, we try to arrange an environment where it is easier to put your children to kindergarten and also change the mentality of the men so that also the men stay at home, you know, yeah. and so So that is... Uh, what the special, um, uh, the special police department about LGBTQ people, LGBTQ, okay, sorry. Yeah, I know LGBTIQ. So the, uh, there is a special police department in Netherlands. I'm sure it it's, is. It's uh, successful not. enough to protect the LGBT community? I have not heard of it, but I'm yeah. sure it exists. In Holland, we have yeah. all kinds of special yeah. departments, so I'm, uh, I think in general, LGBTIQ uh, people feel protected in the Netherlands. You, everywhere you have stupid people, everywhere yeah. you have people who discriminate, mm -hmm. also in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I'm the first to admit that. Uh, but I, I think that, uh, that I would say most, if I just say s gay people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they feel safe in the Netherlands. And uh, we, uh, we were one of the first, perhaps even the first country in the world to accept gay marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so that is, uh, I think all our, for example, police, I, I don't know about the special department, I'm sure you're right, but our police is also trained yeah. to accept the fact that you have people that are minorities, people that are not standard people. Yeah. So uh, I think, again, and it is, you don't do that one day. You have to do that always, continuously. Okay. Can you tell me that why the cows in the Netherlands are so cute? No, no idea. No, no. I got no idea. I, you think they're cute? Yeah. Black and white? No, but they are so cute. I lived there before. Yeah, I understand that, but uh, no, but no. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, no idea. <laughs> there is a um, village in um, nearby Boxdorf. 
named Turkey. Yes. Yeah. And um, is it there or is it in yeah. the south? Is it the south? No? I think it's nearby Boxtel. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. And um, in uh, 16th century, uh, there is a Dutch revolt, end of the 16th yeah, yeah. century. And the Ottoman Empire helped Dutch people to fight against Spanish Empire. And uh, also, Ottoman Empire sent some food to Dutch yes. people. And how, how it works, and some, even some Dutch people use the slogan that uh, rather Turkish than Pope. Yeah, well, politics is a lot about symbolism. Uh, I think we uh, also once we, uh, we, we, we captured a Spanish ship full with, uh, with, with Ottoman, with Turkish mm -hmm. uh, soldiers on board. So we liberated them and we fed them and we sent them back to, uh, to Constantinople. Yeah. And that was very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. So in return, the Turks or the Ottomans also helped us. Of course, it was symbolic. It was yeah. both sides but small. Uh, symbolic are important. Uh, there is a flag in Leiden and there is some monumental thing in yeah, yeah. Zealand. I know, I know but uh, it, it's symbolic, but yeah. it's important. And uh, it depends a bit how you interpret it. Eh? Liever Paps, uh, no. Uh, leave the Turks than Paps. Yeah. But that does not mean that we really love Turkey because it means that, okay, uh, we, we really hate the Catholics. That's what we do. <laughs> so if you have to choose between Catholics and Turks, then we take the Turks. Uh, but it was, I think, in itself, uh, yes, and you have Turkey, this yeah. small city, and uh, I still think it is in the southwest, but okay, you check. I don't think it is near Boxton. I don't think so. Okay. But you, you know. But I, I, I think that uh, it was very well, symbol. Symbolism is important in politics, mm -hmm. and uh, it was quite something that the Ottoman Empire, the Sultan, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the most powerful men in the world, mm -hmm. invited the Netherlands, mm -hmm. which was still revolting. We were not a state. Yeah. We were revolting against the Spaniards. And they and the Sultan invited us to establish diplomatic relations. So, you know, small country and a big country. So um, there is an icon in the Netherlands uh, as name, um, named Flying Dutchman. What do you think about it? Yeah, we have all kinds of. I mean, and I'm happy about it. It's, uh, we have uh, also this guy who puts his finger in the dike, you know, to stop the. which of course is nonsense. Uh, and, and, and the Flying Dutchman, I think it was on the basis of a book, right? So, uh, and, uh, well, I mean, it does not hurt. It's good for us, yeah. but... Uh, but lately, there are many uh, terror attacks in Turkey and all over the Europe. What do you think about it? Why um, th does it rise? Why we see more terror attacks? And this is very, this is a long answer, but I, 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 we have different reasons for terrorism. Terrorism has always been there, it's nothing new. We always had terrorism. Sometimes less, sometimes more. But terrorism is as old as humanity, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, in that sense, it's nothing new. Yeah. And you have many reasons, different reasons for terrorism. So, uh, uh, and, and, and some of them are very much focused on Turkey, mm -hmm. like PKK is yeah. Turkey. Yeah. And DHKPC, whatever, this, this Marxist, uh, ter mm -hmm. communist, uh, that's also, f also Turkey. Uh, and then you have terrorism, which is more global, yeah. you know, like before Al Qaeda, yeah. Al Nusra. And an you know, offshoot of Al Qaeda is, is ISIS. So well, ISIS is, is, is in a way focusing on establishing a new caliphate. So you have this ISIS want to establish a caliphate in, in, in uh, Iraq and Syria, but in this process they have um, they decided that the whole world, but mainly the West mm -hmm. and then the Christians, mm -hmm. 
are their enemy. So I, I don't understand it. Uh, I, I can, I mean, I, I see how it came about, but that is their ideology, mm -hmm. and they implement it in the most horrible way. And in the process, they uh, well, they kill thousands of innocent people. Yeah. Also Muslims, they kill. They kill Christians. They kill uh, basically everyone they like to kill. Yeah. They're going to lose for sure. I hope so. No, no. Of the course, they they have, they have no chance to win. Yeah. Uh, perhaps they cannot really lose, but they have no chance to win. So they. And, uh, but anyhow, uh, uh, so so they consider us an enemy. I think. Now they also consider Turkey an enemy. For some time, they, Turkey was not an enemy to them, but now Turkey is also an enemy. And, and I think we wish uh, uh, everyone uh, a happier mm -hmm. and more peaceful 2017. Because I think yeah. 2016 has been worldwide quite a tough, uh, tough year, difficult year. And perhaps in Turkey more than almost, I mean, no. Not in almost any other country, but I mean, Syria has been incredibly bad. But Turkey has been has been suffering a lot. So, uh, although I'm not a Turk, mm -hmm. I'm here as a friend and as a diplomat. Mm -hmm. So I'll uh, I very much regret if things are not going well here. So mm -hmm. I really hope next year will be uh, much better than uh, this year. I hope so. Yes. So thanks for the interview. My pleasure. And I wish you best things ever the next year. Thank you. Same Thank to you. you.